and everyone. I am so happy that you are taking just a few minutes to spend with us tonight and to study the Word of God together, especially on this Easter Sunday. And uh, I look forward to the next few minutes being able to share with you some information about uh, victory and how we can be victorious in this life. Uh, you may have heard it said before, or you may have even heard me say it before, that you know we really aren't living so much in the information age these days as much as we are living in the misinformation age. Uh, there is so much bad information out there, isn't there? It isn't always necessarily just bad information, but sometimes it's actually information that is intended to defraud us. I mean, how many times have you gotten that phone call that the warranty on your car is going to expire? Or, or maybe even worse, the one that says there's suspicious activity on your social security number and, and you better do something about it. Um, I'm glad that my cell phone has these settings where it automatically sends any unknown caller to voicemail right away, so I don't even have to deal with it. Or maybe you've been getting emails that are these poor information types of emails, maybe from that uh, prince in Africa that's going to promise you thousands and thousands of dollars for your hundred dollar investment or whatever it is. Or uh, maybe that one that says your account has been canceled from some company and and uh, they're trying to get your information. Misinformation, it just comes in so many shapes and sizes these days. It can be really frustrating for us to try and deal with it. And if, if we're completely honest with ourselves, though, there's another more accurate term for it, and that is lies. Let's not sugarcoat this, okay? The scams and hoaxes that we are constantly exposed to on a regular basis, it's all lies. And it's becoming increasingly difficult to be victorious over misinformation and lies because they just are so prevalent around us. However, that victory is still possible. And the path to victory is through the truth. But to get there, it's going to require two types of examination. And the first of these is looking inward. Uh, we must do a better job of honest self-examination. Because, yeah, there's a lot of bad information out there. And there's a lot of lies out there in the world. But really, we first need to be sure that we are not also contributing to that. And if you've ever seen one of the, the courtroom dramas on TV, you know that uh, when they swear in this witness, they ask them to tell the truth in three ways. They ask them to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And I think that's a good place for us to start. We need to first, when we look inward, make sure that we are telling the truth. Philippians 4 and verse 25 says, Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Speak the truth. Don't just flat out lie to each other. Okay, that's the first one. Secondly, the courts say that, that you need to tell the whole truth. In other words, not half-truths that conveniently leave out important information. Remember in Acts chapter 5 how we read about Ananias and Sapphira, and they wanted some recognition for their generosity. So they made it appear as though they were giving all of the proceeds from the sale of one of their pieces of property. But they were actually only giving a portion of it and keeping it for themselves. So they weren't telling the 
whole truth, and they paid a terrible price for it. In addition to that, thirdly, the courts say that you need to tell nothing but the truth. So don't add anything to the truth that makes the truth difficult to discern, that makes it hard to know what the truth really is. Don't embellish the truth. So this inward look begins with making sure that we are speaking the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But it actually goes beyond just the things that we say. Because I would say that the temptation is even greater for us to share things virtually that are dishonest. We share things on social media without taking the time to investigate whether or not it is genuinely true. And so we end up spreading misinformation. We post things about ourselves that we hope will make us look good, but would certainly fall into that category of not the whole truth or the embellished truth. And these practices that we slip into online are not speaking the truth with our neighbor. So victory over misinformation, victory over the lies that are out there, has to begin with an honest look inward at our own habits. But secondly, we need to do a better job of looking out for the truth. And the word for this really is discernment. Uh, being able to discern fact from fiction, to discern truth from lies, to discern good information from misinformation. David Kinnaman, in his book titled Faith for Exiles, says that more and more people are turning to their devices to make sense of the world around them. The screens that we carry with us are increasingly becoming our sources for not only entertainment, but also instruction and even counseling at times. And the reason that that is a problem is because there is so much bad information out there. And as Kinnaman puts it, instantaneous access to information does not equal wisdom. It is nice to be able to find quick answers to questions, or at least some questions, like what's the biggest spider in the world, or how do I bake a cake from scratch? Those are the kinds of answers that it's good to have at our fingertips and have quick and easy access to. But we must be more cautious when asking the bigger questions of life. If we want the truest, deepest, and most godly answers to life's questions, there is only one source that we can consistently rely on. Because truth is found in God. Truth is not relative. It is not subjective. But the best part is, truth is readily available to us. God is truth. And over and over again throughout Scripture, what we see is the emphasis on the fact that God the Father and the Son and the Spirit are the embodiment of truth. And in addition to that, the, the Word of God that has been shared with us through the Spirit is also truth. So if you want to have better discernment of the truth, and if you want greater wisdom in life's decisions, and if you want to be victorious over the misinformation and the lies that Satan is perpetrating on this world, then get closer to God and His Word. This is a victory 
that does not have to elude us. It is there for the taking if we will first look honestly inward at ourselves. If we will be certain that we are ourselves sharing and spreading the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And then if we will look outward and work toward a better and better discernment of the truth as we grow in our knowledge and understanding of God and His Word, then we can, in fact, be victorious. We can have victory over misinformation and lies. And I hope that tonight you have learned a little bit more about how to do that and how God can help you be victorious in this life. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. I hope that you have a wonderful week. hope that you enjoy the beautiful spring, and I look forward to our next time that we can be together and study the Word of God. Have a wonderful night. Take care.